what I think about the Red Book. The Red Book uh, was Dr. Jung's experimentation on himself. And I think that it would be useful for you to uh, go back to the top of the chat here and go through to the link for the encounters with the greater personality. Because um, what Dr. Edinger said to us in that lecture was that the purpose of Jungian analysis is, is to engender um, that kind of an encounter. And uh, he said that the reason that he uh, gave lectures like that was to alert people to the fact that they can happen to you without analysis. And that happened to me. Um, and uh, I had exposure to Jungian psychology. And exposure to Jungian psychology just alone can engender one of these encounters. And uh, in the other lecture, the lecture about uh, individuation, he talks about how, the fact that once you have uh, one of these encounters, the experience, um, then you know. Then you have no need for a creed. In terms of religion, you have no need for a creed. Then um, you don't have to, you have no need to believe because you know. And uh, for me, the epiphany of that came uh, one time about 15 years ago when I uh, happened to be watching the YouTube video of Dr. Jung him, sa himself saying, uh, I have no need to believe I know. And I said, aha, I know. And therefore, um, you know, that attracted me even more strongly into Dr. Jung's oeuvre. So, um, so the point is that uh, one needs to understand what is meant by this numinous experience. And I think an excellent description of that is in Dr. Edinger's uh, lecture, which I transcribed, and you can find it that link, Encounters with the Greater Personality. Um, but as I say, that happened to me. Now, it also happened to many biblical figures, including uh, Moses, including Job, including Jacob, uh, including Paul. And you'll remember that in most of those cases, if not all, uh, they were describing dreams or visions. And uh, the book of Revelation is like that also. Uh, John of Patmos' uh, book of Revelation, which ends the Bible. And, um, and so those were uh, revelatory experiences for them. But in Dr. Jung's case, he was a psychiatrist living 2,000 years later and trying to look at uh, the Bible and analyze it from the point of view of a psychiatrist. And so he and he was aware from his experience at the Bergoldsley, working with actual um, mental, mentally ill people, uh, what kinds of things they were seeing in their psyche. And he was having visions at, at this time, at the early time. Uh, so in December of uh, 1913, uh, he started to have, he had the first of, uh, five visions that were prefigurations of World War I. He didn't know what was happening to him at the time. He knew as a psychiatrist that he might be having a psychotic experience. Um, and so he kept mum about it, but these events kept happening. And he began to experiment on himself. So he's started to go into his deep unconscious uh, to see what he could vision because he understood how to do that. And so whereas the biblical figures had tended to have, you know, one-off experiences or experiences in the case of Job, maybe he had five or ten experiences over his lifetime. But in the case of Dr. Jung, 
he had an ongoing experience for five years. Um, and the Red Book is uh, a version of what he experienced. Now, keep in mind that Sono Shamdasani, who is the editor of the Red Book, uh, spent 13 years putting this book together. And he was working from about uh, eight, eight or nine uh, so-called black books, which were uh, Dr. Jung's um, uh, experimental notes, basically his, his uh, uh, scientific notes that he was taking on his own experiences. He was keeping track of things. And so um, then he was going back over this period, starting in 1913 up until 1928, he um, refined that experience and put it, put those things in a very special way. He, he was treating them with uh, special reverence because he wanted to keep in contact with his soul. And so he was treating it very reverently. And as you probably know, if you looked at the Red Book, uh, you'll know that about 200 pages of it are in uh, German calligraphy that is handwritten by Carl Jung in this book. Well, these were pages that he very carefully wrote in calligraphy. They were based on his black books, um, but he was refining them somewhat. And so, uh, and then they were put in a folio book, a large folio book that was in effect a scrapbook, a scrapbook of his, um, of his paintings and of these calligraphy pages. And so what Sonu Shamdasani did for us is he translated the scrapbook, the, the red book, which was never published in Jung's lifetime. And he was very reluctant uh, to publish it during his lifetime because he thought people would not understand it since it was his, his notes of, of his um, excursions into his own unconscious. And he didn't feel people would really understand it. And uh, Dr. Shamdasani, uh, to his great credit, realized, number one, knew that um, the Red Book existed. And he also knew that major portions of it were in various libraries around the world. He found uh, some manuscript versions of it uh, in um, Yale Library, in the manuscript division of the Yale Library. And so what he did was he went to the heirs of C.G. Jung in the mid-1990s, and he convinced them to let him publish it because he said, you know, these things are going to come out one way or another, and it would be best if it comes out in a very excellent version. And so that's what he did with the folio edition of the book. Okay, so this is very hard to wield around, <laughs> but this is the Red Book of C.G. Young, officially called Liber Novus. And um, the first 200 pages of it are um, these calligraphy pages that I mentioned. I mentioned. And they include, they're, they're like a illustrated medieval manuscript, and that was sort of what he had in mind. And uh, so you can see each page has a, a painting. All these paintings were done by Dr. Young, and plus the German calligraphy. Okay, now, that's a doorstop. I don't get it out very often, but I've had to have it out in the last couple of days, and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, but there is a um, reader's edition of the Red Book. The big edition is about $150 on Amazon these days, and the smaller the reader's edition has none of the plates in it, uh, but it has all the words. And um, or all the translations, let's say. 
if you're into reading the Red Book, I don't recommend it as a place to start in Jungian psychology because it will just uh, confuse you. Um, but once you get into his work, then you'll understand. Uh, let me just see if I can quickly find. Okay, in the beginning of the Red Book, he, and this is him explaining what it was. The years of which I have spoken to you, when I pursued the inner images, were the most important time of my life. Everything else is to be derived from this. It began at that time, and the later details hardly matter anymore. My entire life consisted in elaborating what had burst forth from the unconscious and flooded me like an enigmatic stream and threatened to break me. That was the stuff and material for more than only one life. Everything later was merely the outer classification, the scientific elaboration, and the integration into life. But the numinous beginning, which contained everything, was then. And he wrote that in 1957. Uh, I can't quickly find for the benefit of our listening audience, I'm sorry to say, um, how he ended the book, but he literally ended it in the middle of a sentence. He simply stopped in the middle of a sentence, and what caused him to stop was his meeting with Richard Wilhelm, which is the point that we're coming into his career now as we're talking about uh, the secret of the golden flower. So at that point, when Wilhelm came and presented him with the secret of the golden flower, that allowed him to take what had been happening to him for 15 years and contextualize it in a sense of human experience going back thousands of years. And that's what the I Ching was, because he was seeing the same symbols in the I Ching and the secret of the golden flower that he had seen in his examining room. Uh, among European patients. And so that was the significance of it. And so, so the Red Book, uh, you know, we can talk about the Red Book all night, and I might do a, sesh, a few sessions on the Red Book, but I think we ought to focus on a few other things first. And um, my uh, reaction to it was that I was uh, I was reading um, a book by um, Dr. Clarissa Pincola Estes called Women Who Run With the Wolves. Uh, in 1993, my mother gave that book to my wife for Christmas. And the day after Christmas, I picked it up and started reading it. And I told my wife she couldn't have it back until I was finished, and I finished in two days. And what that did was it kicked off, for me, an encounter, the kind of encounter that Dr. Edinger is talking about. And my encounter uh, lasted for eight months, and it emerged as a novel. And it was a novel that I... Um, couldn't really cope with some of the consequences of, but it, it included, uh, the process included uh, a psychogenic experience every day with the heroine of the novel literally waking me up every morning at 6 a.m. and making me sit down and write until 8 or 9 in the morning, 500 to 1,000 words. And at the time, I just thought I was having some sort of creative frenzy like a famous novelist might have. And um, so I just went with the flow, uh, thinking that, okay, this is what famous writers are talking about when they have writer's block. Uh, but that didn't entirely satisfy me. I put the novel in my drawer for um, 21 years, and um, but in 2009, when the Red Book was published, 
then I realized that that's what, what had happened to me. What happened to Dr. Jung is what happened to me. And I recognized the uh, parallels. So, I mean, I didn't have the same experiences that Dr. Jung had, obviously. I mean, I didn't meet Philemon or Elijah or Salome or a snake as he did. As he did. <laughs> but I had experiences that were related to me. And that contextualized it for me. And it's one of the reasons why I'm so firmly into Jungian study. Um, but anyway, I hope that that helps. I, I, I don't think I can get too much further into the Red Book tonight.